Pretty Little Liars, Ravenswood, GH, Younger, Scream the TV series, Catfish, Teen Mom. Watch any of these series? Chances are you've heard his music. Chris Arena is next. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. What do you think when you fall asleep? Yes, what you're listening to are the sounds of Chris Arena and his song that was Emmy nominated. Crazy. You'll always be Emmy nominee, Chris Arena. <laughs> that was that was Naxi's theme, I call it, <laughs> on General Hospital. Hi, welcome to an edition of the Concert Experience here on AfterBuzz TV and AfterBuzzTV.com. I am one of your hosts, James Lott Jr. You can follow me on all the interwebs. Yes, I said interwebs. At James Lott Jr. Sitting right next to me is the guy who's taking over my life. <laughs> he's, like, he's, he's, he's almost there. He's almost there with the hair. <laughs> Always just yeah, just one step behind James Lott Jr. Getting closer and closer to one day I take over. You can follow me on Twitter at Happy Go Jackie, everybody. He's always happy. And then next to him is my girl always. There's only one. There's only one. Lucretia Lyon. Yeah, as James said, since there is only one, you can always find me at L-A-C-R-E-T-I-A-L-Y-O-N anywhere on the internet. And our guest who's actually seen the song and playing it and wrote it, he has songs featured on all the shows that I just mentioned. He was just recently here for a daytime Emmy for original song. So we're going to be talking about all that, too, of course. And the song is from GH, which is called General Hospital, and it is written for Nathan and Maxie, which, you know, we had Nathan on. The guy who plays Nathan last week. This guy also has soap opera star good looks. <laughs> you should be on a soap. <laughs> I was thinking it's you. I was like, you should be on a soap. No. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris <laughs> Arena. <laughs> Hi. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, and he's a very nice guy, you guys. So, okay, so welcome. And I know, I actually, when I posted your pictures... People are like, this guy is hot. <laughs> like, who is he and where is he no. and why is he on TV? You, you do like to be on TV. I can see that. <laughs> yeah, I've always just played music. Just, yeah, just stay behind the scenes. Well, so yeah. did Johnny Depp and Jonathan Jackson. Look at where they are. <laughs> <laughs> they do both. They do yeah. both. Yes, they do both. So you were nominated for an Emmy. Hmm. So first of all, how did you find out you were nominated and, and then getting gearing up to it? What was your feeling about that? So the show, um, they nominated me. Um, it, it actually went through the show, and I found out about a month before the ceremony, and it was through a gentleman, uh, Paul Glass, who did all the music. And the guy, just he just called me. He was like, I got you nominated for an Emmy. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> like, for music? And he goes, yeah, for music. And I was like... They had Emmys for music? Oh, how funny. Yeah, yeah so, um, yeah, so the sh- it went through the show. I found out about a month before the ceremony, and then I called my mom, and mm-hmm. she freaked out. Oh. It was, yeah, it was, a, it was a really crazy experience. Very surreal. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And were you, um, how did you prepare for the, the big night? I saw you were dressed really nice. I was hoping you were dressed really nice. Oh, I get so nervous at those things, man. Like, I was on the red carpet. Mm-hmm. I was, like, quietly, like, shaking. But, yeah, I just I just, yeah, just did, did a lot of yoga and, did, you know, just tried to not think about it. But um, it was great. I mean, it was it was an awesome experience to be able to, you know, see all the stars and yeah. all that stuff. It was great. Yeah. Like I said, you were always being uh, Emmy nominated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For Serena. It's, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird. I'm not used to that. <laughs> for music. <laughs> yeah. Right, thanks for yeah. Yeah, music. yeah. Hey, they nominate comedians for Grammys. They so do. Yeah, that's why true. Not, why not? You know. yeah. They do. Sure. They do. Yeah. Now, I just want to tell you, Sheena123 says she's a huge fan of yours. Mm. So can you look at that camera and sure. say hi to her? <laughs> hi, Sheena123. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks so much. Hi. There you go. Are you happy? There you go, girl. <laughs> I think you're a girl. Uh, or a guy. <laughs> I'm a guy. I'm not sure. Um, now... Jacob Marquez is going to ask a question that I was going to ask anyway, mm-hmm. so I was going to ask it now. How did you start? Because the song process onto TV shows is not an easy process. Can you explain some of that? Um, it, different shows have different criteria. Um, the Pretty Little Liars gig, they basically went through my catalog and they found a couple songs that fit for certain scenes and they just they pulled them. Um, but General Hospital really wasn't like that. They had a They had a very specific goal. They wanted a song that centered around two characters and they wanted it to be um, something different than obviously an underscore they wanted it to have some sort of a uh, emotional trigger and my job was to kind of find a song that would not only be able to describe the characters but would also be able to remain open enough for people to relate to in the sense of you know any 
any song. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, the process for General Hospital was it was it was very it was very particular, and um, I did I think something like ninety eight revisions of the song. Oh my God! Yeah, no. So we had about three months of of, of post production on it, and um, they wanted it a certain way. And when it finally got there, we were we were ready to let it go. But yeah, it was <laughs> it was about it was about three and a half months of the same song. So wow. yeah, it was it was intense. And yeah. is the show just giving you like here's uh, Nathan and Maxie's story? So just kind of you know this kind of like the bullet points of it, and then is that how you start kind of start developing lyrics exactly. based on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, they kind of give me a couple general things, but really it was just about going back and watching and seeing how their relationship like unfolded. Um, and yeah, I mean it's it's you know it's kind of an up and down thing with them. So you know, like any love story, there's there's good moments and bad moments, and the song had to reflect that. And yeah, it was just kind of a trip, the whole thing. Do you have any um, any uh, looking at the relationship? Do you have any things you were thinking about? You're like, they're a mess. Or, <laughs> Maxie, stop it! You start, you start getting into it a little bit. Well, they're both so attractive. Yeah. It was like, God, it's so, it's so easy to watch it. But yeah, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was, yeah, it was it was it was very uh, it was it was very um, it reminded me of things I've been through for sure, with certain women. But it was. It was nice. I mean, it was. It's a great show, and they're great characters. And again, really easy to watch. So it was. It was nice. <laughs> that's, that's a fun point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I have to mention, like, I have ninety-eight revisions. Like, mm. just what is the approval process for? Like, is it like, all right, this is it. It's revision number fifty-two. I think I got elected, and then it's <laughs> yeah. like, there's just one word there. They're like, yeah, maybe yeah. it should be a different word. You're like, oh, yeah, so close. Yeah, no, it's it's not yeah. about the words, it's about how you pronounce them too. Oh, like right. everything has to be. You have to say it a certain way, and it has to be said and the right context and um you know they're they knew what they wanted and when i submitted the first draft they were you know they were very um they were very nice about it and they they definitely helped steer the the creative process but um yeah, it, it, it took a while to get you know everything they wanted perfect and yeah it was it was a good three months. Yeah. yeah. Like, played part of yeah. the song, were you like, I don't hear a song ever again now? And like, I'm so over it. I like how Dave Grohl is of Smells yes. Like Teen yeah. Spirit. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. I used to hear that song in my, in my, in my dreams. In your dreams. Yeah. yeah. No oh, pun intended. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah that's, I'm sick of that song. I'm sick of that song. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I love it. Yeah. Appreciate your song. Well, as a musician, most of you guys have influences as to what gives you your sound. So, who are yours? Definitely mm -hmm. Tom Petty and Bob Dylan. Oh yeah, yeah. I can hear Tom. it definitely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm such a Dylan. Yeah. And Petty Love Tom fan. Petty. Oh my, oh, my gosh, I listen to him all the way over here, actually. Yeah, um, and we're contemporary. Um, I, uh, so many, so many great artists right now. I, I love Bon Iver. I love John Mayer. I love Jack mm -hmm. Johnson. I love singer songwriters. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's funny mm -hmm. you mentioned um, Bob Dylan and, and Tom Petty, who are both legendary Absolutely. singer, yeah. songwriter, songwriters, guitarists. Sure. And I know Tom Petty has a new thing coming out with his old band, mm. a second album. Mm. I forgot that he's Mud Flowers. I can forget mm. the name of the album. And he's doing. He's actually playing like bass, so he plays bass in that band, oh. not guitar. Very interesting. Really, yeah, interesting. Really interesting. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, but I like him. Yeah, no, I, I was listening to him on the way over here. Actually, I was like kind of rocking out while <laughs> trying to avoid the traffic, but it was it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, which song were you listening to? Which song or album were you listening to? I was just, I, I, it's it's so it's so cheesy. But I was listening to Free Falling. It's a great I, song. I, it's a great song, and there's there's so many great lyrics. And like, I was driving over Ventura, and like the lyric popped on, and I was like, "This is cool." I was like, "This is this is this is kind of serendipitous," but yeah. Yeah, I didn't yeah. really get the song until I moved here, and I'm like, yeah. oh, "That's Rosita. That's oh, Ventura." That's it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
And so, but, but are you a person who actually writes songs pretty fast? No. no so you, you're, you're, you're like no. taking time. I, 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 I have about 200 songs right now, and I can't finish any of them. It's just like, interesting. I, I have so many songs that are unfinished, and it just takes like the, the right thing in my life to actually be like, okay, I need to finish this and focus and narrow it down, or else just my hard drive just gets overrun with just like <laughs> tracks and tracks and tracks. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you worked with General Hospital, especially, um, so how was it working with them? And are there more songs in the works for them? More Maxie and Nathan updated songs? <laughs> Have you like, you, you rewrite a song for Jason and Sam because he doesn't like that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please, 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 Chris, yeah, please, yeah, I beg you. It's all reason today. I was like, I'm, all, I'm not leaving, letting Chris leave until I get a commitment that he's going to write. I knew. <laughs> I'll you a song. I'll you a song. I promise. I'll you a song. I promise. No, it was it was good working with them. Those guys were really cool. Um, again, Paul Glass was uh, the guy. Is, he's you know, he's at the show twenty four seven. Wow. He's making music seven days a week. That guy works his tail off. Um, and it was great working with him. He's an East. Co- I'm from the East Coast, and Paul's from Boston. And it was it was just really nice um, having him kind of guide me a little bit. And they did ask me for um, a commitment to do another song for next year. So Very good. Working on yeah. a, another one. So we'll see what happens. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Jason will say Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Please. Yeah. Please. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, that's so exciting. Oh, good. Yeah. That's good. That's great. Yeah. Have you met Have you met them? Have you met um, Christian I have, Storms? In? No. I, I haven't. No. Oh, funny. I've only met a couple guys from over there, but yeah. Yeah. It's great if you met them or not. Yeah. So you also done work with Pretty Little Liars, yeah. Ravens with all these things. So again, sure. is it is it again? Is it just they saw your songs and picked you out of the lineup and said, "Yeah." When you get that phone call. What is it like? I'm like, I'm gonna be on Pretty Little Liars. I was, like, yeah. It was crazy. They they used five songs in um, uh, season five or season. I'm sorry, season four. They used five songs in season four. Um, and the first one they used, it was I think it was like for 17 seconds, and it was a background, <laughs> like somebody was walking into a bar, and you know, a little clip of music popped on. Um, but someone over there liked it, and they asked, you know, or they went through my catalog and they found four more. And um, it was, I mean, the, sh- the show has been so so good to me, and the, fa- the you know the fans are so loyal there that I was just grateful to even have a second or two on. You know what I mean? So um, it was crazy, you know. That's, so, that's amazing, yeah. and that's what it's like to watch your songs being. Because it's not the radio; it's not. Yeah, is it, you're on t- you're TV. Yeah, a show. It's, it's really it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. You're, you're watching, and it's like that's not really me. That doesn't sound like me. <laughs> and you never get you never get used to it. It's like it's just it's a trip. It's a trip. <laughs> oh yeah. God. So, you guys. What's your so now, do you uh, do you do a lot of touring, or is it mostly just you're staying here in LA and you're just composing and writing songs? Um, as of now, I'm getting ready to start playing out again. The last two years, I've been in this, <laughs> mostly for the General Hospital thing. I've been, been, in, been in the studio. But 98 but, times. 98 times, yeah. Um, but when I first moved here, I was playing out all over the city. And before, I um, was on the East Coast. And I would play out all over the East Coast. And I really miss it. My buddy, John Frizzell, who's a, a really amazing um, film composer, he had a 50th birthday party this past Friday night. And he invited all these great players. And it was like the first time I actually like, played out in a year or two. And it just it feels like it just like just sparked something in me again. It felt so good. So I think um, I think when the next record comes out, I'm gonna do some support for sure on the city. What's so. the what's the best thing about doing when you're on the road? What do you enjoy most? Uh, <laughs> I, I that you can stay here. Yeah, PG thirteen. PG thirteen. No, no, no. I um I I like it's like meeting new people, I like going to new venues and and just interacting. It's just it's just a new experience every time and um. Yeah, it's, it's it's just you know seeing seeing how people react to your music and when people actually know who you are or listen to, and they actually like say a lyric back to you, it's like that's really weird too, but in a good way. Sure. You know, it's like so. Well, it's gotta be nice to be able to get that immediate feedback as opposed to like doing something ninety eight times with Jenner Hospital, yeah. and then you still gotta wait for yeah. it to air absolutely. and then, yeah. then wait for it to get yeah, the feedback. Yeah, absolutely. No, there's nothing like playing out live. It's just like it's it's you know it's what I love to do, and I'm really excited to play out again. So yeah. Do you have a new record coming out? Hopefully next month. Next month, hopefully. Yes. If it's oh. been, yeah. You think of a title too. You think of a title, you guys. Maybe you guys don't me think of a title. Think of a title. I don't know. I, don't know. I have to listen to you it. Listen yeah. to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, like Christian yeah, Settle had, like, oh, just <laughs> you want to just slide yeah, me. I mean, just yeah. slide me the album, then I'll give you a title. Then. <laughs> 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 I'm the music guy here. <laughs> uh, Jacob Marquez says, "Yes, please write a song for Jason and Sam." 
Okay. Uh, they agree. They might, everybody, I mean, I, I know you don't have a choice of what you guys saw him for, but we're all, I guess, rooting for that. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Actually, yeah, you did music for Scream. Mm. So, <laughs> what's your favorite scary movie? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> yeah. um, definitely The Conjuring. Oh, oh really? Yeah. 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 yeah, the newer one. Yeah, it's coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's one coming out now. I think the second one. Well, or there was An- yeah. Annabelle was the was that the prequel to it? Or something, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But those things freak me out, man. This is so good. I love them. I love them. I don't think uh, the Conjuring scared the scared the, uh, the, 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 the yeah. poo yeah. out of him. The poo out of him. He's my cousin. Yes. 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 Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So <laughs> now, before we came on, we were talking about your apartment or your place yeah. over in Venice. Sure. I think it's a great story, actually. Can you? It's, it's a sure. great story. Can you explain the, like your your weird view of <laughs> yeah, so Venice? I, you know, as as you were, were talking about, Venice has changed a lot in the last fifteen mm. years, and. Um, Back then, it was a, it was kind of a, a rough neighborhood, mm-hmm. and so my apartment actually was rented out by the LAPD before me, oh, really? and they um, they built a window door that's basically a door six feet off the ground, and from the door, if you open it, you can see about five or six different intersections, and so about 10 or 15 years ago, they would sit up there, and they would just call out the drug bus, <laughs> and they would just... <laughs> <laughs> they would just pick people off from my apartment. I love that. And then, it, you know, but over time, it, you know, it's, it's getting a little nicer. And yeah. then they rented it out to me. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I live in Venice, yeah. and it's kind of still like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a misconception. People, parts I mean, are. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. The parts of Venice are nice. Parts are not. I mean, well, now that the Silicon Beach and all that is happening. Yeah. 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 Off Abbott Kinney, it's all really nice, really expensive. But, sure. like, if you live closer to the beach, you're like, mm, mm. maybe this isn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Carry pepper yeah. spray. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because there's a great housing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, oh, I love Venice. Yeah, but this is a funny story. Like, you never, I never heard of before. I just yeah, having I mean, this like weird door window thing. That's the first thing that the, the landlord told me. He's like, "Oh, by the way, the police used to rent this yeah. area," and I was like. Should I be living here? <laughs> so. Did you find it off Craigslist or one of those other things? Because I remember going to look at an apartment that advertised it was Jim Morrison's old apartment. And I'm oh. like, well, yeah, uh, maybe 50 years ago. No, <laughs> no my, my mother, actually, we yeah. were, we were dr- so I used to live in Santa Monica, and yeah. I would make so much music, and it was so loud, I was about to get evicted. Oh, wow. My landlord was like, you need to get out. Like, everybody <laughs> hates you. Yeah. Like, they don't not like you, they hate you. Because you, cause you play the same song for three months straight oh, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so my mother was in town and we were driving around and we drove by this building in Venice and there was a really you know handsome old you know man walking around with mm. a big beard and my mom goes stop the car and I go what she's like stop the car that guy owns the place I'm like what are you talking about he owns the place she's like no that guy probably owns the place <laughs> stop the car she gets out she walks over to the guy the guy owned the place <gasps> oh, right? wow. oh, and he God. also was from the same town um, that I was from in New Jersey. Oh my God! And oh, wow. This guy, he's become like a family friend, and oh my God. <laughs> he's just taking care of us, and just like he's been the coolest guy. And he rented out, you know, one of the one of the units there, and it's a work live spot, so they get to okay. make music and, and live there. But yes, my mother, she's. You go, mom. Yeah, yeah. she's she's a crazy Italian from New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I yeah. understand it. East yeah. Coast. Yeah, all so, in, yeah. all in. That's so funny. So yeah. you're able to actually do music there with no real issue. At your place, yeah, kind pretty, of. pretty much. I lived next to um, a couple other musicians, Cody Simpson. I'm not sure if you're yes. oh, yeah. he oh, yeah. right, yeah. he was right next to me. Oh, funny. And so he's always jamming, and yeah. um, there's a p- couple younger kids who live down the down the hall or, or down the block a little bit. Um, but it's a really it's a really cool building. I mean, people are making music, and they're, it's it still has that kind of like artsy Venice feel to mm-hmm. it. So it's fun. Which is going away. Yeah, it definitely mm-hmm. is. I know. So, All I the know. hipsters ruining everything. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Frank? Now, what brought you out here from the East Coast? Was it a decision to get involved more in, in television, doing uh, scores for for that and songs? I came out here six years ago for a, 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 the Billboard Film and TV conference. I just came out here for a week, and this is actually how I met. General Hospital and Paul Glass, I went to a seminar um, where Paul was speaking. Mm-hmm. And before the seminar, there was a recycling bin. And in the recycling bin, they had, if, if there was an artist or if there was a, um, a manager who wanted to submit music to just drop your CD in the recycling bin, and they were going to randomly pick out. Oh my God. Oh, wow. So, I mean, there must have been a thousand CDs, right? And so Paul gets up there and he pulls out my disc. Oh my God. Pulls out my disc. And he plays it for the conference, and he liked the song. He liked it was an old, it was an old demo of a song. He liked what he heard, and that was six years ago. And for six years, I stayed in touch with the guy. I emailed him a new song every day. I said, "Paul, 
here's a new song, what do you think of this, what do you think of that? And the guy couldn't have been nicer. He was he got back to me, you know, every time. You know, it wasn't just like thanks. It was it was a you know, he actually cared. Yeah, yeah. Um and he finally gave me a shot. He said, Why don't you write a song for these two characters? And that was uh five and a half years ago. So that's, that's that's amazing. So after that happened, I was like, yeah, I, th- I think I need to move to LA. I think, yeah, I think, yeah. There's something, something's in the air. The if water, your CD but, yeah. has pulled out a thousand of them, yeah, you need to get on a plane yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah, and be so, like, yeah, yeah. No, it's just, it's really crazy how things like that happen. You know, mm-hmm. just, sometimes there's like a higher force, I guess, you know, dr- uh, dictating where you go in life. But it was it was crazy. I found Frank at a Starbucks. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Yeah, it, was, it was Kismet. I bought that some spilled latte over. I'm like, oh my God, it's Frank. That's right. You're the one looking for it right the there. Yeah. 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 Little, little, little did they know he's bringing the person that was going to replace him. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Crazy. it's crazy. <laughs> so we're going to play um, part of his song, Feeling, which is a newer song, I believe, that's going to possibly be on your, on your, you're not sure what's going to be on there? I'm not, not really sure. I, I mean, I, I, I got a feeling, maybe. Well, you yeah. ah, 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 should edit but, that out. We want to give some. We want people to get a little more to know you a little more, okay. and so let's play a little bit of that. Let's a little beat to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So it's a little bit of that. So it's nice and upbeat. Yeah. So you do a little bit of everything, man. Like upbeat, slow, mid tempo. I'm, I'm trying to you know, do some new things for this next record and see where it okay. takes me. But um, yeah, that um, that's a fun one. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. Yeah, it's a good one. But I want to yeah. play. Let's just really know a little bit. And we're actually gonna have you pick up your guitar and play a, at least some of a song. Yeah, I'll play a little bit. <laughs> play a little bit of your song, of sure. course, on their stuff. Um, Lucretia, do you have anything you wanna? Well, Sheena123 wants to know if you would do Dancing with the Stars, if as. <laughs> oh like, that's my a funny gosh. question. <laughs> sure, oh my gosh. I I mean, sure, I guess. Yeah, yeah just wait till you see how bad I dance. But yeah, no, we'll, <laughs> well, no I, I, I'm seriously, I have like two left feet. I'm such a bad dancer. I, I do too, and I did the Dallas Dancing with the Stars, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> you yeah. know, you don't have to be that great a dancer. I mean, Michael Cat, uh, Mike Catherwood, I um, yeah, yeah. Michael, but yeah, when you yeah. Williams, all these people have done yeah. it. You know, they did their thing. They went the first round, and yeah, I feel like they'd get negative views though if I was dancing. It, yeah. it, would, it would not help. The network would not <laughs> want it. They'd be like, "Get <laughs> this guy off for losing ratings." It's bad. bad. <laughs> that is so funny, uh, right? So now you've got your album coming. I uh, getting mm-hmm. ready to hopefully release that soon. And how do you determine, determine like the track order for that? Oh, that's a great question. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I usually I have this one friend, uh, Michael Lynn. He used to work over at uh, E. And I, I, for some reason, every time I send him a body of work, he always listens to it, and he always he, he finds a way to make the, like the end of one song and the beginning. Of, he finds a way to have like a transitional uh, like thesis throughout the, uh, all the work I sent him. So I usually refer to this one guy, and he really um, I'm, I'm, I know I, I don't really have an ego about about music, and if, if there's someone else that has an opinion and I, I value their opinion, um, I listen to them. You know, because I think it's music is such a collaborative thing. So, um, yeah, I, I, Michael Lynn is definitely, definitely the guy for you know album order. Yeah, yeah, he's super cool. So yeah. when you're when you're putting a, a, together an album, do you find when you're writing, do you have the concept of the album? You're all everything is thematically revolving around that kind of concept, or you're just mm-hmm. a collection of songs that you've kind of put together, and you're like, all right, I'm going to put these all together and release them. Uh, you know, I I I. I I want it to focus on one thing. It's very difficult for me to, because I'm so ADD, it's so hard for me to like, you know, start something and like stay on this on this train or whatever. Um, but that is the goal for me. I do try and focus it and hone it in so it feels like it's a logical thought r- rather than just have like random splats of random thoughts. So, yeah. So, because when you say 98 revisions with General Hospital, yeah. but, but, now your own <laughs> work, though, for that, yeah. uh, what, uh, how many, I mean, what, what kind of quality control do you do for that? Do you kind of put yourself under that kind of microscope in a sense where, like, all right, I got to really make sure everything's right before I put it out? Are you showing a lot of friends and stuff, getting their feedback? Or yeah. do you feel like you're, like, you're pretty secure about what you're doing? Do you go, like, I, I, if it's good, it's good? I think the older I get, the, the more I trust myself. And, and I, I, when I first started off, I was always, I was listening to so many people and I was influenced the music and, I was just getting a mixture of um, some reviews were great, some reviews were not so great, and it's just I wasn't really listening to myself. But again, as I get older and as I as I as I start to craft what I do more, um, it becomes much more of an interpersonal thing. So, yeah. 
When did you first start uh, singing and playing? I started playing guitar. My dad told me when I was about seven years old. Oh, wow. I started singing not too long ago, maybe like when I was 21, 22. Was, um, but yeah, the guitar. my grandfather was a guitarist. He okay. was a jazz guitarist in New York, and he bought a uh, 1959 Les Paul to match his mm. tuxedo. Yeah. He wanted it to match his tuxedo, so, oh. so he custom ordered the guitar black. Oh, my God. Right? And oh. the guy had no idea what he was doing, right? The guitar is, from what we know, the only black 1959 Les Paul ever made. Wow. And oh, wow. two months ago, it was inducted to the Grammy Museum oh, downtown. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, that's great. Um, and my grandfather, he passed away um, about 12 years ago, but he was a funny guy. He was a great guitar mm. player, but he had no idea what he was doing with that mm. guitar. He just ordered this guitar, and lo and behold, it was like it was like the Stradivarius of guitars. Oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Les Pauls. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. We, but it, it's just, We're a Fender family, but yeah, that's yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you're like, get off the show. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, and you're done. Yeah. I was like, Les Pauls. Yeah. I mean, they're immaculate as well. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> our, you know. well, I have, I have <laughs> my Fender right there. I brought my Fender. Oh, oh yeah. 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 There's love there to you. So, yeah. That's very cool. So let's yeah. go ahead and have you sure, start. Yeah. So you look like you play a song. Let me hook this baby up. Yeah, stick it up. It's so exciting. Okay. Love when we get to do music on our TV shows. I know. Yeah. I'm like, mm. So this is a this is a new one. Um, again, the song's not fully finished. The, That's the, fine. the record's still evolving, but yes. I'll play a little mm. bit. Play a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Sure. What a beautiful song. That's so nice. Thanks. Oh my god. It's still a work in progress. But yeah. That's like mesmerized. That's like a very nice, relaxing kind of like you play it in the background or having a glass of wine or some whiskey or something. Some whiskey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some whiskey. I can do either. Or a shot, yeah. Or a shot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was me yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just, like, just kind of, just, you know, just yeah. like you can hear it in the background and hang out on a yeah. nice, like, spring, summer night. Sure. That's great. Right. Thanks so much. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so nice. good to do that. Yeah. Do you work with any particular producers? Because I know that can be a lot of influence as far as how your sound and how the album puts together. Uh, I do. Yeah. I work with this one guy, Tony Maserati, oh, who cool. actually his studio yeah. is right next to this building. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a really uh, great sound engineer, and he's a, he's my mentor. I moved out here and I lived on his couch for basically <laughs> for a year. Yeah. I lived right next to here, oh, and I, I I used to um, watch this. He's so he's a sound engineer, he, and he mixes uh, like all his 
you know, Beyonce stuff. And I used oh, to, wow. I used to like, I could like peek in and see the sessions and see like what the producers were like using on her tracks. And so I like apply that to my music. And so I was able to, through watching him and, you know, work with other people, um, apply it to my life. And that's how I make music now, you know, so studying what he, what he does. Um, but yeah, he's been, he's been a mentor of mine for almost a decade now. And He's the craziest, nicest, kookiest, <laughs> most talented guy I've ever met. He's, he's, he's the real deal, man. He's from New York, and he's just, he, he's awesome. He's a great guy. A.K. Nihal, which I'm saying I'm probably butchering you, I'm sorry. Um, what is your favorite song? My favorite song? Oh, that's a really hard question. I know you can't that's really a, ask that question. Yeah. Oh, like, your ba- like your babies, aren't they? That's like my babies. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my, I guess my own personal yeah. song that, mm-hmm. that I've composed. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's such a hard song. Yeah, you probably you probably can't. I mean, can't uh, you? I, I don't. I, I'm, oh, gosh, I don't. Dreams. No, I was like, yeah. Yeah. Say, yeah. not dreams. Yeah. So you're doing other songs, but yeah. dreams. Um, I think that my favorite song I've ever um, ever composed. I think it's a song I have called Kids, okay. um, which was on the record Once I Have Two. It was the first song um, on the record. Um, it, 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 it was a song that I wrote coming from a place of um, nostalgia. Like I, I grew up uh, on, the, on the New Jersey shore, mm-hmm. and it wasn't like your typical like, Jersey <laughs> shore. It was, <laughs> it, was right by, it, was, it was the southern part right by Cape May. It was really nice. And, <laughs> and this, uh, you guys were judging me. I could already tell <laughs> <laughs> Frank was judging, judging me. Not no, no, that's right. That's right. Like, <laughs> no, but when I, I, I used to go there for the summers, and I, um, we had all these like, friends, and we would just like take our shoes off and run. It's just, I had all these great memories. Mm-hmm. I wrote a song about, about it, and when I listen to the song, it brings me back to that that place um, every time. So it's if I had to pick, which is really hard, that would be my favorite song. Aww. Yeah, Aww. yeah. Well, thanks for being on our show. Thanks for having me. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. talked. You did fine. Yeah. No, no, wasn't that, talking, yeah. talking. Yeah, I get nervous with these things too. <laughs> so you guys did a really good job oh. making me feel good. So. Well, thank you. Yeah. Tell the folks on. So tell folks in that camera mm-hmm. where they can actually find you and your music. Sure. Online. Sure. Um, you can find my music. At my website, chrisarena.com. You can go to my Facebook page, Chris Arena. My Twitter, um, Chris Arena. It's all pretty easy to find. My Instagram is Chris underscore Arena. So, yeah. Find them. Yes. That's fine. Them. Buy it when it comes out. <laughs> Buy it. Well, <laughs> fuck, we'll, we'll actually, when, when your album comes out, we will put it on our GH page. Oh, very cool. Thanks. And at least get out to our fans. Oh, very nice. What's going on. Very nice. And I want to thank everybody who was watching us, too, because we had people watching and yeah. commenting. Yeah. Oh, thank you guys for tuning in. It was for great. you. Yeah. For you. Yeah. So, Lucretia, tell me where they can find you. Okay, guys, you can find me at L A C R E T I A L Y O N, since there is only one anywhere on social media. Mm-hmm. Man. You can follow me on Twitter at Heavy Go Jackie, and then see us back here at 5:30 for the yeah. GH Report. Mm-hmm. Yes, different. He's going to lead it today. Uh oh, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> change sheet, seats and everything. It'll be crazy today. And I'm Jason Jr. You'll see me uh, for GH Report at 5:30 and the debut of the Bold Breakdown, the Bold Beautiful After Show at 8 p.m. tonight with Pearson Fode. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 